This is the Green's Theorem. We'll be first learning this notation, cul of f. Then we'll learn this notation, where this notation indicates a path integral over a path c. And then we'll be learning this notation, where this indicates a double integral over a region r. We'll be learning all these notations one by one, and then built up into the whole equation. It is required that you know some calculus as a little bit of integrals and derivatives and so on. So, let us begin. Curl measures the rotation component of a motion. This is called the vorticity of a vector field f. For example, imagine this field where we can see that there are no curl present as there is no vorticity or no rotation aspect. Although, if you look at this field where this is minus y x, we can clearly see a rotation present as the entire field rotates around the origin. So, we can say that rotation is indeed present. A counterclockwise rotation is positive and a clockwise rotation is negative. So, what is curl of f equal to? Or more precisely, how do we calculate a curl of a field? We want to know the rotation part of a vector field f. Let us define its components as f equals p and q. The formula to calculate f equals q sub x minus p sub y. Remember that the notation q sub x simply means the derivative of x in respect to x. A simple example can be f equals minus y x. So in this matter, of course, curl of f equals partial partial x of x minus partial partial y of minus y, which would give us 2. This is the basic definition of this concept. Now we can move on, on to double integrals, which is going to be fun. A standard integral measured the area under a graph between some a and b. A double integral will find the area of a surface. So let's just say we have a function f of x, y with two variables, x and y. We pick a region in the space as r and we will try to find a volume of the intersection. So we denote this as the double integral over the region r of f of x and y dA, where dA is the piece of the area. The way we compute them can be understood as to take slices. So let s of x equals the area of slice by a yz plane. So then the volume equals the double integral from x minimum to x maximum of s of x dx. And for given x, s of x equals the double integral from y minimum of x of y maximum of x of f of x and y dy. So, I mean, of course, this might be confusing and sudden, but we basically want the area above the intersection of the function and our region as like the following. The y depends on x because look at this, as we increase x, y changes. So if we combine everything, we get this whole enormous equation. Now it should make a little sense to you at least. We have first calculated the x component, then we iterated the entire thing. So let's do an example to help things out. Let's just try to do z, which is our function, equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared. We want the integrate between the region 0, 1 for x and 0, 1 for y. We simply do this. We first do the inner integral as the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared minus y squared dy, which is just... 2 divided by 3 minus x squared. Then we do the outer integral as the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 divided by 3 minus x squared dx. And this would give us 1 divided by 3. This is how we compute double integrals. Now we can move on to the last part we have to learn in order to understand Green's theorem. Path integrals calculate the work done by a vector field on a certain path. The work done equals force multiplied by distance, which we denote as f dot delta r, where delta r is the vector from the old point to the new one, as we can see here. Let us cut our path to small pieces to simplify matters as the following. For each of them, we will be having a vector and a force. If you sum them up, we will get our original path. So let's call the path C and the work done W equals the path integral over the path C of f dot dr. This is work. This can be approximated as the, the path integral of C of f dot dr equals the limit while delta r approaches zero of the summing of f dot delta ri.
To compute this, we can deduce so as the path integral over the path C of f dot dl equals this whole limit, where the delta r divided by delta t delta t is actually the velocity of the vector delta r delta t. So we can put our results and deduce that now we have the integral from t1 to t2 of f, which is our vector field, multiplied by dr divided by dt, dt, where t1 and t2 are the time interval, which can be shown in our line as the following. We are taking a picture of our system at every delta t and we are adding them together. That's what we're doing. This is the basis of how to calculate line integrals. Again, I think an example will ease everything. Hence, let us do an example. Considering the vector field f equals minus y x, let's say that we want the force where our path is defined as x equals c and y equals t squared. And this t ranges from 0 to 1. We can visualize this as so. We apply the things we have defined and we say that the work done is simply this. We have defined f our vector field as minus y x. So if we substitute t in this, we'll get minus t squared and t. Then the velocity vector is dx divided by dt, which is simply 1, and dy divided by dt equals 2t. We basically took the derivatives of our vector field one by one. So now our equation is the following. Also note that if like a line is like this, open, we use this notation and if it's a closed line, we use this notation where we have a small circle in our integral. I personally think that the small circle looks incredibly cool, so I like that notation a lot. Now you must admit, calculating line integrals is a little complicated and boring and so on, so now we have a saviour, which is the Green's Theorem, because we can use Green's Theorem to calculate line integrals in a different way. Let's see. This theorem is significant because it relates the line integrals with surface, I mean double integrals. So by using this theorem, instead of calculating the line integral and suffering eternally, we can simply calculate the surface integral and we'll be good to go. If a vector field is defined everywhere and has curl equals zero, we call this field conservative. And notice in the theorem, it will be equal to zero. So if we have a conservative field, it will be always zero and there is no need to compute it easily. Although, of course, we will be focusing not on that simple fortunate, but a field with curl equals not zero. We want to compute a line integral on this closed curve, which is counterclockwise. It has to be counterclockwise or it will not work. Well, it will work, but we will have to change the signs and so on, so I will just assume that we'll be doing counterclockwise lines always in this video. So, let us do an example. We'll let c equals a circle with the radius 1 centred at 2 and 0, and we want this incredibly hard-looking line integral. We have to first parameterize this curve by switching the poly coordinates and doing really boring work, which leads to our eternal doom. But, by using Green's theorem, we simply do this where r, which is our region, will look like this. We know that the double integral means the area of the region r multiplied by x to the bar on top, where x to the bar on top simply means the center of mass, which is basically the average value of x. So our integral becomes 1 divided by area of r of double integral over the region r of x dA. And as we're taking uniform density with the center of mass at the point 2 and 0, we simplify this to this, where it gives us magically 2 pi. So the area of the region is pi, as it is a disk with radius 1. So then we conclude that this hard-looking path integral simply equals to 2 pi. As you can see, we have taken a complicated-looking path integral and found the simple result without being bothered by parameterizing our curve and going to poly coordinates and etc. So, in a nutshell, this is what Green's theorem does. It is a significant theorem in the world of mathematics as it correlates a line integral with a surface integral.